Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. How is everybody? We finally have our spring weather. So everybody's warm. We're out. We got the doors open. This is amazing. I love it. Um, too cold for too long. So we're all here today to talk about parking. Yay! In particular, this area, Jefferson Street area, and the parking lots that are behind it. Um, as you know, it's kind of getting busy down here. You know, got some new buildings, brand new condos, apartments, businesses across the street. So it's becoming a little more tight to find a find a good parking spot. So that's what we're looking at talking about is how we're going to manage that. You know, we're we're Lynchburg. We're becoming this great place to be, and a lot of people are coming here, and a lot of people want to be part of what we have here. So our goal is to make sure that that's available, that when they come here to visit your businesses and shop and dine, that they come, they find a good place to park, it's easy and convenient to where they want to go, and they can be inside, have a great time, go home and say, wow, I love going to Lynchburg, it was so easy to get around and navigate, I found a parking space easy, I loved the meal that I had or the shopping experience that I had. So we want to make that happen, but it means making some changes. So we got to look at what those changes look like and that's what we're here today. How can we better manage our parking inventory so that we can give that experience to all these great people that are coming to be part of our community? And I'm going to have to move up and do here. So first off, I want to give a little bit of thank you. We got our thank you to Greg McCulley, who is the owner and operator of the Glass House here. Uh, this is a great establishment that offers event venues that happen all around town. I think actually he has a salsa class going on here shortly after ours. So we'll do ours and more people will be coming in. Also his chef, Jason Nagel, who put together our little spread over there. So please get up, help yourself to some snacks. Um, you know, it is before dinner. So we got those mid-afternoon, late-afternoon munchies and some drinks. And thank you all for attending. Really appreciate the time that you've taken out of your day to be here today, to talk about what we're going to talk about today, to discuss your concerns for parking and how we can do a better job as your city government officials and manage what's happening. Um, unfortunately, though, Bonnie can't be here with us today, our city manager, Bonnie Severchek. She's got a long-standing commitment where she teaches a great class through with Virginia Tech on local government management. So it was something that she couldn't change and she really wanted to be here and she sends her um, apologies to all of you and you know know that she's here in spirit but she's also teaching the next generation of local government individuals to better serve their community as well but in her place is our fearless leader charles hartgrove he's still new i think you know okay? still got the new smell on you oh okay okay <laughs> all right let's jump right into it then oh um before i forget we've got some Parking Authority board members that are here. If you don't know, the Parking Management Department also reports to a Parking Authority board. It's a seven member board appointed by City Council to look at what's happening in our off and on street parking facilities in the Central Business District. So it's not Dave Malice, parking manager, making a lot of these decisions. We make recommendations as city people, as myself, to the board to look at this, evaluate what's happening and whether or not it's a good position to go into. So we've got some of those board members around and we've got some council members too. So again, thank you everybody for being here and let's jump into it. Pointer thing doesn't work. So the goal of tonight's meeting is to get your input. We came up with an idea, we floated it, we said here's what we need to do we're using best parking practices for how to better manage the parking constraints that we're facing in downtown. Now it's your turn. We want to know what you think of it. Is this going to work? Does this work for your business? Do you see this as a total flop? You, or you support it. Hey, I think this is great. This is the direction that we need to be going in. So that's why we're here today. So I'm going to spend about 10, 15 minutes quickly going through some slides, covering some of the main points that we need to talk about. And then I'm opening it up to you because that's why we're here. Want to hear from you, want to get your input because that's going to be the driving force for our decision moving forward. So here's the area map. We've got several of these around. We've got the big ones. We've got uh, some over by the table that you could have grabbed. We're mainly talking about these lots right here. Oh, hello? Hello? No. They don't want to talk. So, what are our topics for tonight? One, why now? Why, are, why did we decide to do this now? We talked a little bit about that just a minute ago. What are we trying to do? What is the proposal? What, what do we want? What are we recommending? How do we move this forward? What's the idea? Where do the revenues go? That's big right now. How do we spend the money that we make off of paid parking? And finally, what are their options? Is there something else that we can look at? Do we miss something? 
that's we're going to present a couple ideas, and that's why you're here. So why now? Remember this? Some of you probably do. This is what Jefferson Street looked like before we started the big interceptor project, and we really started tearing up this whole middle area. We created the new parking right here. Not much to see. I think there's a couple things going on at the Bites Unlimited area. Nothing had gone on here. Here we are today. We've got the brand new parking that's been done. The building down here is thriving. We've got new condos right here. This is for sale. Here's looking the other direction. Again, not much going on. Heck, Depot Grill isn't even in yet. It might have been started to get going. I'm not sure. Um, but I, you know, same type of scenario. Uh, very vacant streets. Not the place to be. Here we are today. Particularly right here. Look at that. That's about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Lunch starts at 11.30 for Depot and Waterdog and some of the other restaurants around here. So that's some of the problem that we're looking at today is how do we make that more available? And you knew that was going to happen, so let's just get out of there. There it is looking down the other way. Again, you know, we can see we've got a lot of vacant parking right there. I really wish this clicker worked. So parking is in high demand, just as we just saw. We went from what it was to what it is today. We're seeing a lot, a lot of use of these parking spaces. So how do we better utilize what we have? Uh, we, we built what we can. We have what's available. So the answer is difficult to build more. Uh, it's also very, very costly. Currently, parking is not enforced. So we roll down here, the enforcement personnel, they come down in the, in the cars with the little light shine on the top to basically check for no parking, make sure people aren't blocking traffic, doing anything illegal like that, and for safety reasons, making sure that folks know that we're out, we're looking around. But we are not enforcing any time limits, which allows people to park in their spaces all day without any restrictions for multiple days at a time. We've seen huge business and residential growth. It's been astronomical. Over 900 units alone have gone up in downtown Lynchburg. That is amazing. And what is that? I think in the last five years or so that's happened. So that is amazing. I mean, we can, I don't know any other locality in Virginia that's seeing that type of growth that we're seeing just in residential units being built. And we got more. We got more projects in the line. The revitalization of this area has pretty much been completed. So we don't have plans right now to go and rip up the park again anytime soon. Uh, we don't have any major plans that are going to shut down a huge portion of this area like we had in the past. So that, that was one of the drivers in the past that we looked at when, before we decided to implement any type of parking regulations because there's just too much going on. There's a lot of construction, there's vehicles all over the place, it just wasn't feasible to say, hey, we're going to come in here and say, you can't park here, but where else are you going to park when the lot behind us over here was completely ripped up? Oop. Our plan to manage parking down here has always been part of the parking studies. So all the ones that have been out that we've seen over the past 10, 15 years, managing paid on-street parking or off-street parking has always been in those plans. It was something the consultants told us, the downtown revitalization folks have told us, and it continues to be part of the new plans that we're working on right now. So what are we trying to do? Like I said earlier, we're trying to create turnover. That's the biggest thing. We want to turn over these parking spaces so that we have open, available parking for those guests and visitors that are coming down so they don't circle the block. That's the last thing we want. I mean, I know how frustrating it is for me when I go to a city and I can't find a good close spot and end up circling the block two, three times. Either I just give up and go someplace else, or I find a long parking place away and have to walk. So that's something that we're trying not to have. You know, in essence, it'll be there, but our primary goal is let's turn those spaces around, let's keep them open, let's have people being able to use them, get in them easily, do their shopping and dining, and get out. Another primary reason is to distribute our parking equitably. We want, again, we want to make sure that it's always available for anybody that's there. We want to give them the opportunity to park, shop, dine, get back in their car, drive away, somebody else to use it. You want to turn those spaces over at a minimum a dozen times a day. 
Because every time that space turns around, that's more revenue into the businesses. That's more money being spent locally. That's easier accessibility. People are happier, so they're going to come down more knowing that they have a place to park. Which leads in the second place. Provide that short-term parking for the shoppers and the diners. We can have the business parking and the permits available for the people that work down here. We're not saying we're discrediting that and we don't want those people to, but we've got to find a way to put them in appropriate areas so that the long-term doesn't end up hurting the short-term parking. So that the long-term should make that little bit of a walk into the business every day, but the short-term is for the people that are coming to your business supporting you. That's what we want. Maximizing economic viability by providing these opportunities. Any successful downtown has some type of parking management program, and we'll tell you that by having a successful parking management program and creating those opportunities for the short-term parking, long-term parking, allowing that turnover helps economically. It helps build those businesses. It helps keep the money coming through, the customers coming through. There's a great, uh, I wish I had it with me and I don't today. There's actually this great sheet I found that as a business, you can write in how much money you've made annually, how much money your products are, and you can actually figure out what it costs for that parking space in front of your business. So you can turn that around and say, okay, if that parking space is taken up all day, I'm losing $800 in potential revenue. It's, oh, uh, you know, that's okay. It's warm, it's a breeze, it's good. We like this. So um, if anybody's interested in that, we can, we can definitely get it to you. That's no problem. It's a really neat calculation. And this is part of being consistent with the rest of our downtown plan. All over else, everywhere else that we have parking in Lynchburg, we have some type of control measures. Um, you know, up front, up top, and church, and main, and commerce, and all the side streets, we have a time-limited parking, one, two hour. We've got paid parking in some of the other off-street facilities. Other of our lots are designated as permit only, which they are paid for. So this is part of the comprehensive parking management plan. Keep things consistent, keep it easy, keep it understandable. So that it's, it's the same everywhere you go, everybody's getting the same fair treatment, and nobody feels left out or one person's getting a, a deal over a next person. And this is, as I said earlier, this is part of the best practices in operating a downtown. Um, I got a book here from our planning department, and I'll plug this real quick. This is a really great book. It's called Walkable City, How Downtown Can Save America One Step at a Time. And it's by an author called Jeff Speck. He actually came here about and four or five years ago. Jeff was here. About that really great guy. He goes all over the nation. He researches all these different communities and gives you ideas and suggestions. And there's actually a chapter in here about parking. So that's probably one of the reasons I like it. But again, if you got time, it's not a big, thick book. It's a quick, easy read, but it gives you a great glimpse and idea of what it means to be a vibrant and changing, evolving downtown in today's time and age. So uh, give, it a, give it a crack if you can, Jeff. I'll have it up here if you want to see it. So here's a great map that we just finished working up on. This shows you what parking is available in downtown right now. So your blue right here, this is all privately owned parking lots. Your purple are city owned or leased parking lots that are available for public parking. So that's quite a huge number. Let me give you. So on this map, the private ones, the blue ones again, 99, 99 private off street lots or parking decks for a total of 3,596 parking spaces. What do we got for the public? We have 16, those are the purple ones, off street parking lots or decks for a total of 1,573 parking spaces. So we lag quite substantially behind what the private has. This is what we can offer to the public. Okay, so what exactly are we proposing? What do we want to do? Well, we want to make it paid. Again, consistency. Most of our other off-street facilities are all paid. So paid hourly parking will be consistent with what it is up at the Midtown parking deck, our new Crossroads parking lot, the corner of Main and Commerce, uh, the Clay Street parking deck, and I'm missing one off the top of my head. Shoot. Suntrust. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Okay, so 25 cents for the first hour, $1 each additional hour, $5 daily max. Coin and credit only, and you can pay with a pay by sell option that we started, or we can do business validations. 
We're also going to work in monthly business permits. So those are $40 per month per permit. Residents can pay for theirs $25 per month per permit for the first one, and then $50 for their additional permits. They, all these get a 10% discount for fill your purchase, and we can do business floater permits. So what does that mean? That means if you're, I'm a business and I have, say, five, six employees, I can buy five or six permits under my business name and just float those to my employees so my employees can use them. And then they're just responsible for coming back and returning those permits after they're done with them. So you don't put that burden on the employee themselves. We would continue with it. We would reinstitute the on-street two-hour limit. Most of these signs are already posted. They went up about two and a half years ago. We had some internal stuff that we were working through. We, that's why we didn't, again, the construction, why we didn't go through with making that happen. But this is part of that plan as well, is, again, start controlling the on-street parking with two-hour limits. Enforcement, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. So nights and weekends are free. So you're going to change all the signs and say 6? Yeah, we would. <laughs> I just looked at that, yeah. All the signs you've never used in 26? Yeah, yeah. Didn't hear you we would have to change the signs. The signs currently say eight to six because that's how it was when they originally went up. But we're only enforcing till five because that's when we have staffing. So we would make that change, yes. Here's a proposal. If paid parking is something that we go through with and what we end up doing, here's a brief timeline and where we're at. There's a lot to this process, a lot that we have to do. So we're, we're up here. Uh, next would be a recommendation to the Parking Authority Board on whether or not we proceed with purchasing and going forth with that. That goes to council for approval under, because again, it, expenses have to be appropriated accordingly. We wouldn't order pay stations until May or June, delivery in August, installation, et cetera, et cetera. November, late in October, beginning November, we'd be in operation. So this isn't something that happens right overnight. There is a process to it. We have to go through with it. But again, this is the process and timeline if it's approved to move forward with the plan of paid parking. What do we do with the revenues? That's a big question lately. Revenues for parking are, they go back into the parking department. Parking is a self-sustaining department. So all of the money that we get from meter revenues, from ticket fines, from parking permits, all go back to our department to support the operations, whether it's salaries for the employees or doing par parking lot lines, any type of maintenance upkeep. We, re we try to reinvest as much of the money as we can back into the community. So again, parking lot improvements, lot striping, paving, asphalting, parking blocks, any new trees, stuff like that. Um, support of future parking infrastructure projects. So again, a lot of chatter in the community about a parking deck. That's something that, <clears throat> excuse me, that is again, if a parking deck goes up, we gotta know that we can support it. And through parking revenues, that enables us to know we can support daily operations because they're quite expensive to run. So we gotta know we have that for available for when we need to do improvements or we need to fix anything that's broken. It's not coming out of the general fund, it's not coming out of the, the tax money, it's coming right out of parking. So that's that cycle of parking money going back into parking funds. We also work a lot with Downtown Lynchburg Association. We identify improvement project initiatives. Currently right now we're working with them on a big wayfinding project. I'll show you that right now. So that's, uh, this is what we're looking at. This was a big thing for us, people knowing where to go. So a big thank you and shout out to Ashley Kirshner is here with us. She's the executive director of the Downtown Lynchburg Association and her, and her organization has been very, very gracious to take this project on. Uh, we got some grant funding for that. They've stuffed it up. They said, let's do this. This has been a huge thing we've heard in the community. So we're making this happen. And any, anything, anywhere parking can help out, we're gonna help out, but this was big. And it took a lot of time, so thank you for Ashley and her team for making this a reality, and we'll hopefully, everything uh, good to go end of May? Sure, sure. Signs in the ground, end of May. So yeah, we're gonna work on rebranding parking and getting this all consistent and getting people where they need to go, because that's been the number one concern is, I don't know where to go. What's public, what's private? Here's another idea of what the new signs will look like and the colors. And then we've got other options. You know, if, if it isn't what we propose here, will we put parking meters in pay stations? I shouldn't say meters, let's use it correct here. It's pay stations, pay by space. Then we could look at putting those pay stations in, maybe offering a limited free time, hour, two hour, and then paid after that. Or just implement a two hour limit or just create certain parking lots for permit only use. 
So to get some of the businesses that are taking up some of the prime spaces that the customers want to use into a parking area, that will be more accommodating to both them and the visitors that we have. So there's options out there. Our primary option is paid. Again, that's best parking practices. That's what we've seen the most success in. It's the easiest way for us to enforce and keep people honest. And as I stated earlier, it's the best way to get some extra revenue to put back into downtown. So we can keep it nice, keep it clean. We can hire, afford to hire additional staff to do our trimmings and our parking lot maintenance cleanup. So I, I can't stress that enough, how much parking and the revenues can go back to support making sure this is the great place and making sure it's clean, safe, and everybody has a pleasant experience and wants to come back more and more. This would have worked so much better if the clicker worked. So basically the recap, we talked about why now with all the traffic that's happening. We, uh, we talked about what we're trying to do, implement a paid parking program with best pack parking practices in mind that will be the most equitable way to manage our parking. Uh, our proposal for what that looks like, the parking rates for both hourly and business and residents, where our revenues go and how they support our community. And finally, what are the options that we can look at? If paid isn't the way right now, Perhaps there's another way we can look at making this better and work. So, back to you all. This is your chance for questions and Q&A and all the good stuff. He was quick over here, so I'll grab. Yeah, one question, one comment. What's the rationale behind residents paying 25 a month and business people having to pay 50? Because the residents generally are here later in the day, so they may be coming home 3, 4 o'clock or leaving before 9. So they're not using the facility as much as a business would, where they're coming in at eight or nine, they're here all day, and they're leaving at five or six. So you do the reduced rate because the resident isn't here as much, but it still gives them the opportunity to have a place close to their residence to park. If you're going to generate money, you need to charge them 50 bucks. That's not a big deal. The second comment is Richmond had the same problem. They're well, years ahead of us. So in Richmond, if you want to build lofts, you either have to have parking, lease on parking, you pay $5,000 a unit to the city so they can build some park. We don't have that. And we, that's how you got to generate your revenue. You know, $25 a month is never going to build anything. Absolutely correct. Right now, the city has a zero parking requirement for all downtown development in what is, we're zoned B4 is what it's called for the planners out there. So yes, it's been in place since 2000, the Sasaki plan, I believe. And it just says developers that are, that are coming down don't have to make any uh, accommodations for parking. And they can rely on the city. So it was a, we put that in place to spur that development, spur that revitalization. So uh, developers didn't have to incur that heavy cost up front. Because parking is, is expensive. But you're absolutely right. There's other mechanisms that we can put in place that bring revenue back into the system off of development. So Bonnie Evans behind 1000 Jefferson Street. Yeah, there. So my office is in there. So we look, my office, my individual office looks at that parking lot every day. And so the wasted area that's the, whatever that park light setting is between that parking lot and Depot Grill could be converted to a parking lot and pick up more spaces. Because no one ever uses it. I look at it every day. Are you talking about where all those papers are in the trees? Oh, the grotto area. I mean, it's just it's a okay. waste of okay. time and effort. Oh, uh, that was put in as part of the. I don't care. Yeah, it was. I don't. You could. You can, you can take that landscaping and put it somewhere else. You don't have to put it there. Uh, <laughs> Having it. Yeah, there's nobody over there. Nobody ever it's, a, it's a waste. I mean, just, if you need parking, you need to create it. And that's easy for you. Are you going to mention about the paving? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I totally forgot about that. So, uh, once I get with you, one minute. I completely forgot about yeah, that, so thank you. It is a huge important thing, and I apologize that I completely overlooked that paving. One of the biggest concerns that we heard with these lots that we were talking about, I was just mentioned the Riverfront Park lot, Depot lot, Canal lot, and Jefferson lot is, they're in terrible condition. Lots of potholes, things keep breaking up. So the Public Works Department and Parking have worked close together to make sure that we pave this first. So before any paid parking or any parking regulations go into any of these lots, we are making a concerted effort to get them paved. 
as early as July. We're looking at reallocating money, pushing it over, and making sure that these are paved and striped so they will not be that, gra that gravel anymore. They won't fall apart. We're getting them up to where they need to be. That was a huge concern from stakeholders when we initially floated this idea, and we're going to make that happen. So that, that's on its way. Regardless if this proposal goes through, those lots will be paved. Sorry about that, folks. This gentleman up front. My name is Larry Bassett, and um, myself and other people who live at Riverview's Art Space, some of whom are here today, uh, get the door prize for having lived on Jefferson Street for almost 15 years. Um, so we have watched Jefferson Street go from a row of totally <coughs> abandoned buildings, essentially, okay, to okay. what it is today. It is astounding. Um, and we were here when they brought in the train cars that are now the depot kitchen area. And we were here when they put in the little park next to the depot, which has just been rudely slammed. Uh, people who live at this end of the street do go to that park. If you spend all day looking out your window, I suggest you do something that would be more income generating. Uh, but people do use that part. Uh, and my only comment is that I hope that this downtown parking will be treated as a unit. Because I have been, and really, we have been waiting for 15 years to have somebody say, you know, you're going to need to pay for parking. Mm -hmm. We under, I think we understand that. Mm -hmm. that that's been coming. Mm -hmm. uh, in 15 years, I've gotten three parking tickets. Two of really? which were forgiven. Um, and, you know, so, so, so I, I love parking down here, actually. Um, but, but I'm a 24 7 parker. Uh, and, and people are. And Riverviews is the first downtown loft development that was developed without parking. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a big debate at the time. Riverviews could not have happened. Because Riverview doesn't have any land other than right. what the building is sitting on. In fact, Riverview has just installed five parking spots, which you know you might laugh at, but anyway. So so now we have five more than we had, uh, and of course we're across the street from a little lot which is commandeered by Amazement Square somehow because of some mm -hmm. deal, you know before anything was happening down here. Um, but, you know, I think people are willing to pay, I, I, I'm willing to pay, I can't say, I'm willing to pay for a parking sticker. I just hope my sticker will let me park in a var the variety of lots that are right down here. Okay. Um, because different lots have vacancies at different times of the day, uh, so. That's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Right now, our parking permits, the residential or business, are designated to a lot. So you purchase your permit for what lot you want to be in. It is something that we've talked about internally in the parking department of whether we change that, where if you buy a surface permit, you can park at any one of the surface lots. So you bring up a good point. There is a low utilization in some lots versus other lots. So I, we've thought about it. It's been, it's on the horizon. Okay. We think about it. It's there. Something we need to bring up to parking authority. I, um, I'm from the Eastern Woods, and, and my question was, yes, Tuesday at the parking authority meeting, you said only two lots were going to be paid for by the members. So can you clarify which of those lots will be paid prior to the situation of the parking authority's proposal? Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. The riverfront lot right here, and Water Dog, and the depot lot next to depot. Those are the two that are we see the most deterioration with, that we receive the most complaints on, and quite frankly, they're the ones that are the busiest. So we're going after those are our two priorities, and then as funding becomes available and it's allocated, uh, we'll work down the row on that one. And that one's Jefferson Street, and this one is the Canal Lab. I'm correct, this uh, two, two issues um, have to do with handicap parking. We don't have enough. Uh, parking lot M, the alleyway here, is a, a nightmare. There's no stop sign for a pedestrian. 
uh, snow, rain, flood, it is a pain, and I hate to see somebody trying to get a wheelchair mm -hmm. from your paid parking lot into one of these businesses. Good point. Um, well, with the paving, we can take care of some of that. We can work on looking at the, um, what are they called? And ADA. Not ADA, the, they're the strips that go down to designate that that's a walkway because that is really hard to see right now. Uh, ADA compliance, we just have to review that according to our zoning code and see what we can, what we have to provide and what we can provide and, and go from there. We've got two spots now for everything. Yeah, there's only, there's only two right there and there is none in the back unless we have special events. So we, we'll look at that as well. Yes, sir. Uh, my concerns are that uh, the, 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 the as the news and events before us, that the other two lots have been left. And you talk about consistency, yet that mm -hmm. does not seem to be the case. There seem to be some car routes for individual organizations, and Larry just mentioned the one across the river we use. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is the competition that we're doing. You've got free on street with the two out, mm -hmm. but then there's no car, or there's no allowance for that within the surface lot. So surely you're creating competition for your own parking by charging. Mm -hmm. And then the other question is, is at 25 cents for the first hour, is it really worth it? Mm -hmm. uh, surely we'll just say two hours free and then go pay parking. If, if you're, you know, if you really want to turn it, or is this really just about revenue generation? So. Good points, good points. Uh, the other lots, that first question was just about, you know, consistency and making sure that we pave all the lots. We're going to try as funding becomes available. So, you know, we'll hit the first main ones and then work into the other ones as we can. Hopefully we can scrounge up some money and hit them all at once. Um, your second question about consistency. So, that builds the rates at 25 cents for the first hour, builds into the larger discussion of where do we go with paid parking on street that has been tossed around for several years. The goal is to have off-street paid parking cheaper so that folks can go to there versus the more expensive on-street parking. As we work into that, Hopefully we're setting the setting ourselves up so when we do institute paid parking, if that ever does come to fruition, we'll already have the rates that people know and are cheap so it'll push people into the off street lots. But right now, yeah, have an on street paid parking, we are competing with ourselves because it's free. And that's where people are gonna go. That's where the most abuse is gonna happen first because it's it's free parking, you don't have to pay for it. So we just gotta do a better job at enforcing that time limit. So that essentially if you need that extra time, you know you're gonna have to go into the lot. Any others? Any others? Oh, got one up front here. Hey, I appreciate you putting this on. Um, my concern is I don't think people are going to want to pay this. When I said people, I mean consumers. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard for two decades now we want to revitalize downtown Lynchburg, and now we're doing that. Mm -hmm. And it seems like we're going to try to now hurt the people that come down here and use these areas. And I don't think it's going to help. Keep, it's going to hurt. It's not going to hurt people of means. It's going to hurt, you know, a lot of the college students that live down here. And I think there's a lot of federal dollars coming into Lynchburg from the universities, especially Liberty. And we're seeing a lot of those students move down here and live down here. And so we're going to penalize them with uh, more fees, uh, more, I mean, it's a tax. That's what I consider it to be, a tax. And I think that it, you're penalizing people that want to go to the coffee shop or save places all day. And I don't, I don't think that's the way to get more people downtown. Um, and I think long term, it's, it's just a bad idea. I know. Parking is difficult downtown, mm -hmm. but it's not impossible. And so I think that Lynchburg, it's, it's way too early to be talking about char charging a tax on all the parking, all that we're talking about doing here today. And I think a lot of people in this community would be opposed to it. Um, there's already a feeling like the downtown area gets a lot of the money that, that, that we pay for on the other side of town. Mm -hmm. And this is just another way that people coming from another side of town are going to be penalized when they come down to the downtown area that we all pay for anyway. So I think a lot of people will be opposed to this. Okay. Um, good point, good points. Uh, with, I'm gonna to touch base on the tax because I, I see it a little differently. Um, when you look at paid parking and unpaid parking, you, you definitely look at an indirect versus a direct tax or cost of, of doing business. So when you go to the mall, you park for free at the mall, you, you're paying an indir uh, indirect cost to do that because you're basically, you're ta the money that you would spend to pay for parking is being spent at the retail establishment because their rent that they pay supports that parking. Where when you come to downtown, it's, it's a direct fee that you pay. Um, what I, so whether you look at it as a tax or a fee, like in the presentation, I really, in my career, I've looked at that as a, as a, as a user fee. 
So if I'm coming downtown to you know experience what's there and I pay the meter, I'm hoping that my money is being reinvested back into that community because I want to see that downtown be successful and thrive. So that's what we're trying to do here is let people not put a tax burden on a business by saying, okay, if we're going to support parking initiatives, uh, what was stated earlier about developer impact fees or business improvement districts or, or getting the money that way, if, if we're not going to do that, then we've got to look at other avenues. So we can then not tax a business by saying, oh, we're going to up your deals tax, or we're going to put an extra parking tax on you that you have to pay. But as a user, if you choose to come down here and participate, when you do put your money into the meter, hopefully you'll know that that money's being reinvested back in, and then we can do a community campaign so that folks understand the meaning of parking and that it's not just a tax that gets dropped into one big lump sum that nobody knows where it goes. The good thing here is we'll know where it goes. You're paying that, it's going back into parking. So. And I guess in my mind, the meals tax is already one of the highest in the nation. Mm -hmm. We have outrageous real estate taxes compared to the surrounding counties. And so what are we paying for if we now have to pay for, for more things? And so when I use the restaurants downtown, I feel like I thought I was paying for the streets. I thought I was already paying for the water. Yeah, that's good. No, no. It's, it's completely different, separate. So we, you know, that's where that parking fee comes in. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that, but that's completely separate. The meals tax goes into a different fund to support different operations, and um, our, our parking funds support our parking initiatives. Did I, did I hit it right? Yeah. A little bit? Well, uh, I don't see where you're coming from. Okay, I don't okay. Know that I agree about it. Perfect. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's talk about what we really need. This parking. is two, you owe a quarter. Parking <laughs> We need a parking thing. That's what we need. Parking deck, where? You can talk about all this, you want to jump people around. But growing up, all the people who have had success build parking garages. They do. And they also have successful parking programs. And impact fees, you know, $10,000 a space, you can build 500 spaces for $5 million, and $5 million is what we gave the hotel people. So we come up with five more million, we build 500 parking places. And that builds on your earlier statement of, of de developers that are building, taking, you know, using developer impact fees and other uh, measurements that we can get additional funding to support parking. The biggest thing is that once we build it, how do we take care of it? And that's where the paid parking revenue comes in. Is we're, for instance, in my previous life, when we went and built the last deck that I built, one of the primary questions that we asked was, okay, how do we sustain it? How do we make sure that we can fix it if something breaks? So we made a $100,000 threshold. We have to know that we're getting over $100,000 to put away as future maintenance and improvements and put that in a special fund in case something happened. So that was based off of whatever we were making on street and in the other facilities and what potential revenue we could make in that parking deck. So we sustained it by charging for parking everything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I say, we gave five, the motel $5 million and they let them pay it back with their tax money. So I'd rather see that $5 million go into building, you know, 100, 500 parking places. That, that would help a whole lot of people. Not just that new hotel. Yep. yep. Options. One thing about charging for the first hour, and Dave will correct me if I'm wrong, but it's somewhat the logistics or the mechanics of it to go over there and put it in and put your space number in. You've got to put a quarter or something in to get the first hour. you got to put something in the machine in order to either pay by space or pay by or pay by license plate or pay by getting the ticket out to put in your window, whatever the mechanics <coughs> of getting your 45 minutes free or even if it's two hours free, you have to go over and put a quarter in the machine to, to get that going. Is that not correct? That's correct. Okay. Yes. So maybe I'm wrong, but all of these lots will be free after five on a weekend. So you're going to charge residents a reduced price, mm -hmm. but and they're only going to be here after five is the thought, right? Some of them are. But that's the thought. Some so what's to stop them from not buying a pass and just using the lots, the free lots after five, so they're not even paying the money, and then you're essentially penalizing people who work down here because we don't have a choice, and we're also getting double what residents who are here most of the time are paying. Well, that's true. The resident can just choose, you know, if they're coming after five and they don't have to pay a permit if they're gone before eight o'clock, then yeah, it doesn't make economical sense. I, I wouldn't buy one if I were a resident. But um, for the businesses, we, we got to get them where they're going. We got to create that parking space availability. Um, what was the, the second part? If you're making them free after five, yeah. 
I mean, I get the apartment idea because those are businesses, they're uh, restaurants. People are there late. But if you're making after five and then the residents already paying half price, people will be working to five. So you're already working down here, you're driving down here. Now we have to pay more than people that live down here. Because you're using it more than the people but that live down here. I also eat down here for yeah. lunch and for dinner, and I shop down here because I'm already here. So I'm not really quite sure why there's such a difference in the fees or being able to use the parking. So. so would it be better to say that it would be uh, could be easier if the rates were the same? Mm -hmm. Could be the same. I also think they're going to have paid lots. They yeah. should be paid lots, like regardless of the time. Because they're, if you're if you're trying to get turnover, so the restaurants and businesses can be have more access to their customers, they should be paid lots all the time, or not on Sundays or Saturdays. That's how it is in Richmond, mm -hmm. or even in Blacksburg. It's it's about the weekends they're paid. So extend the paid hour later into the evening so that it makes more sense for, basically what you're saying is extend the paid time out further so that everybody shares in the, the cost of having to come downtown and pay to park. Not that I want to pay for parking, but right. yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Your comment that people living and working here use the whole, they get it 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. The people that don't park here doing the business hours get it 120 hours a week. Well, because of the weekend. Well, I, about because I live in here. I don't park in the day five days a week. I got 128 in free parking. Everybody else has to pay 50 bucks for four hours. We're cheaper. to say people who work here use it more is incorrect. They use it a third of the time when people live there. Sure. It's an easy matter. Yeah, if you look at it. I see. Yeah. If you stretch it out, I'm thinking more of a work week, Monday through Friday, four oh, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you live there and you don't lose the debt for it, Use the other 128 hours because 168 hours. I've done it, man. Yeah. Oh, over there. Sorry. Um, and I don't need that. Um, is there a thought? Maybe this is a little bit too specific. Um, as far as the separating the lots, like you have, I guess, in the Midtown lot with hourly spaces versus folks that have the passes, like. How you would break up those lots? You know, like Midtown, you have like two rows that oh. are pass parking only, but then you have all the hourly mm -hmm. that's available. So, are there thoughts on that? So that what what is the percentage of hourly versus for employees or residents that would have that availability designated to them? Or maybe that's a little too specific at this point. Too specific. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> If this goes through and, and the proposal to do pay parking, then right. we would evaluate what we could basically look at a percentile okay. of who would need it the most versus okay. in, and set up that. But one. you would envision it something like that, like there would mm -hmm. be hourly and dedicated spots for. for or members. just the uh, another way to do that is you set up a, a, a number of permits that can be sold for that lot, so say 20. Okay. So you sell 20 lots, 20 parking permits for that lot, the rest is remained hourly. Okay. And then anybody that uh, needs to get in there would go on a waiting list. So if people went off, people would get back onto it. And then uh, you just evaluate it. It's one of those things you just keep an eye on and evaluate usage. And as, say, the demand for resident goes up or business and the demand for hourly goes down, then you just you shift the demand. Okay. Somebody over here? I see somebody. Hi, uh, Charlie Catalano. I've also lived downtown for 15 years. Thought I'd have reviews. Now I'm going to change the place. This is the town. Uh, parking is an issue uh, on the weekends, uh, as that young lady pointed out. Uh, and I think there should be a future policy regarding uh, nights and weekends. And the idea that parking free during those times, uh, uh, I think, is, a, is an issue that needs to be followed because there is a definite uh, parking problem uh, after five uh, on weekends. Thank you. Yep. One other advantage, nobody likes to pay for parking when they can get it for free, but one other advantage on the meter parking and the pay parking versus just the signs, you know, for the two hour free parking, is that if you come down and you want to spend all day, you can. I mean, you'll have, I mean, you can do unlimited for, for $5. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to come and spend a couple hours with the water dog and then go get some ice cream and then go over to the depot, you know, 
know, walk your dog, or bring a bicycle down and spend the day. You can do that. You don't have to worry about coming back on, from the bike trail and, and moving your car in two hours down to another block. Um, that's an advantage a lot of people don't really take into account when they think, oh, I gotta pay for parking. But $5 for all day parking is kind of cheap. Thank you. Anybody else? One more? Mr. Hartgrove, any, any comments? I know we got some Parking Authority board members. Ms. Jagger here is one of our council members. Any comments? Guys good? Okay. Well, uh, short and sweet, quick and easy. That was the goal. Thank you all for coming again. I appreciate it. I mean, when, when does this start? When does all this happen? Good question. So the next process is we we take this, so we're going to pull all these comments together that we've talked about today, and that's going to go back to the parking authority. Their next meeting is in June. It'll be the second Tuesday at 2:30, and they're going to review these and determine whether or not this is something that we do. We go back out. Do, right now, this is mostly stakeholders. So do we go back out again, or do we make a recommendation to move forward with this process and go to council with it? And you don't start enforcing these meters until. Right, not until a decision is made. So everything stays as is until a decision is made. And any decision that does get made, there will be ample communication coming out from uh, the Communications Marketing Department, Downtown Lynchburg Association, to let everybody know what's happening so you'll have time to prepare, adjust, call me if you want. That hasn't happened. That has not happened. So everything is staying as is. Um, Greg McCauley, are you around? Oh, I just want to take a minute to thank Greg McCauley again in the Glass House. You know, again, they do some great stuff here, so please, if you have a need for a venue or an event, contact Mr. McCauley. Thank you all. Appreciate your time.